Throughout the course of my life, I've searched for many rare and endangered snake species that many people have never gotten a chance to see, and I've also had the privilege to share these experiences with many of you. As many of you know, some of my favorite local species are the incredibly elusive rainbow snake and the incredibly colored western mud snake. Both snakes are unique aquatic species, and they're very closely related. What's interesting is that you can spend years searching and have very little luck seeing these snakes, which is why they're some of my favorites. You know, this is a really interesting section of Louisiana, this kind of southeast section that has bayous, rivers, and all kinds of different aquatic ecosystems, and it's home to a lot of different reptiles and amphibians. Now what's really cool is two very rare snakes live here. They're part of the Ferencia genus and there are only two snakes in it. It's the mud snake and the rainbow snake. Now as many of you guys remember, last year we actually found a rainbow snake and we did find a mud snake here this year. And uh, there's two snakes that I've been wanting to put next to each other for years and I've never gotten a chance, till today. All right guys, have a look at this. These are the only two Ferencia snakes in the entire world. They're part of the same genus and they're super rare. You rarely ever see either of these snakes. Now, you guys know this snake on my left, this is Iris, my rainbow snake. And we've had her for a little over a year now, and she is gorgeous. But the mud snake, you might be asking, where did we get this mud snake? And uh, it's kind of funny. <laughs> no time to talk. All right, let me see the snake. It's a mud snake, it's a huge mud snake. It's a huge mud snake. It's a big mud snake. Curtis, that's a mud snake, grab it. It's in neighborhoods, so clearly it's gonna have to be relocated because uh, they get hit in here a lot. They don't survive well here. But the swamp, there's like a refuge right outside this neighborhood where I'm guessing he actually came from. So I can bring him out there. So we held on to it. We're gonna get some shots of it and probably just let it back go. Now both of these snakes are incredibly rare. Rarely ever do people see either of these snakes. Of these two, the rainbow snake is definitely less common. However, both of these species have a pretty big range. Their range goes from here in Louisiana all the way up the East Coast, even to the Virginia area. So both of these snakes are pretty widespread. They're just not easy to see, mostly because they spend a lot of their time underground or hiding amongst aquatic vegetation. One thing that's pretty interesting about these two snakes is they have very specialized diets, but they're both completely different. The rainbow snake tends to mostly feed on eels and tadpoles, specifically American eels and bullfrog tadpoles. Whereas the mud snake tends to eat amphiumas, which are a giant salamander looking thing, as well as a, an occasional tadpole, frog, and uh, siren. Both of these species have actually been found to eat sirens, which are another salamander species. And when they're young, the infants of both of these snake species will eat tadpoles and very small salamanders. Now if you are having trouble recognizing these snakes, because the top is kind of difficult in some areas, because eastern mud snakes will have red and black on the top, if it's got yellow on it, yellow on the belly, yellow on the chin, it's most likely a rainbow snake. However, there are some really crazy hybrid, morph, whatever you want to call them, mud snakes that will have a yellow head. So just look at the patterns of these two snakes and compare and whatever it looks closest to is most likely what it is. But do remember that these guys can sometimes mix. Now what's really cool about both these snakes, and this is a trait that they share, they both have extremely sharp tails. And there's actually a reason for that. Both of their prey, whether it's an amphiuma or an eel, both of them are super slippery and they're really, really hard to catch. So what they do is they grab it and then they pin it down with that sharp tail. And that's the best way that they can get a grip on their prey is with that tail. And there's also a hilarious myth and it kind of relates to both these snakes, but mostly the rainbow snake, is that they would roll down hills, I kid you not, holding their tail in their mouth, roll down hills and stab people. What the heck? <laughs> Where did you come up with that? Like, how is that a thing? Like these snakes don't even bite and like I don't even know how they got found enough to where people made a myth like that. Like that's that's just genuinely hilarious to me. I would love to see that. That'd be hilarious. I'm just gonna walk in one day and the snake is practicing rolling. That'd be hilarious. But that is the reason that they have those pointy tails is to pin down their prey. Now when you look at their coloration, you might think not think camouflage, but since these snakes mostly come out at night and live in like flowing water for a sense. They don't like to live in this muddied water normally. Like this section, while well, yes, there could be mud snakes back here, they're most likely gonna be living in the main river system down here that's gonna be more flowing. And both these snakes have that blackish red coloration. And what it does is it kind of reflects back any amount of light, whether it be moonlight or starlight, sunlight, whatever, when they're in the water and it makes them very difficult to see. 
I would have to say the Mud Snake is the most camouflage of these two, mostly because of the bright yellow on the sides of the Rainbow Snake. However, that dark black color and those red blotchings do actually help it camouflage in very specific settings. Now when it comes to predators, lots of different things will eat these guys. Common white egrets and uh, great blue herrings are the number one things that will eat them in Louisiana. Uh, you'll get little mammals and stuff that will grab a little young one like a raccoon. Uh, alligator would probably eat one if it swam by it. But for the most part the unfortunate thing is that cars is what's mostly killing both of these snakes right now. The truth of the matter is, is that both these snakes do come onto the roads at night when it rains. And while that is extremely rare, there's so many cars out, normally they end up getting hit, which is an absolute shame. Now another thing I want to mention is, if you ever see one of these snakes on the road, one thing you'll often notice is they get a puffy head. And I'm actually really nervous about this mud snake, because it does have a little bit of a puffy head, and it was out midday. Oftentimes, when these snakes are found midday on the roads, something's wrong with them, something's not right. And obviously, we're going to try to give this snake some treatment before we release it, but uh, Oftentimes, if you do see a snake on the road midday and it's one of these two species, there's most likely something wrong with it. And that's one of the problems that we're having is we're not sure what's happening to these snakes. Lots of little environmental issues can happen that can really mess these guys up. In fact, they're doing a really cool study in Florida right now to try to release eels back into their lakes because some were found very recently around there. Fun fact, Florida Wildlife and Fisheries actually reached out to me because they knew I had this snake and asked me for a research report on it because of the conservation work that they're doing down in Florida for the eels to help this snake start coming back into the wild. So that was just a really neat tidbit. If you're gonna find either of these snakes, it's gonna be extremely rare. So definitely take some pictures of them if you see them and actually send them to me because that would be really cool. I'm on Instagram, I'll have the link in the description of that, selfless plug, but I just honestly wanna see pictures of these snakes if you guys send them. You're laughing Hit at me. me up in those DMs. Iris is super beautiful and I've had the privilege of actually taking care of her for over a year now. However, in the future we're going to do a comparative study with these two snakes because they are in the same genus, they can mix, and they're just a really special snake overall. Now one last thing I want to show you guys is the size of these snakes. Now mud snakes on average do get bigger than rainbow snakes and you can tell that this mud snake is actually heavier than Iris but they're both just as long. In fact, Iris is a huge rainbow. So we're gonna stand up real quick. I want you to see the size of both of these snakes. Here we go. Check that out. And I'm holding them from the base of the tail so it's not hurting them at all. They're both very comfortable. Iris likes to look down when you hold her up like that. Well, that is about as cool as this could have gone. Getting to see both of these incredibly rare Ferencia snake species right next to each other. This is not something that you'll see too often, and this is just something that I really want to do for fun, showing both of these snakes next to each other. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. Well guys, we really hope you enjoyed this video. This has been one I've been looking forward to a lot lately, so I'm really glad you guys got to watch it. And if you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe and like this video for more content. And we will see you guys next time.